What's up everyone? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today we're going to be finally talking about top five Black Widows in HeroClix. Now, I've been wanting to do this video for over a year. If you go way back, my second video ever was literally an unboxing for the Black Widow movie set, and I've literally wanted to do this top five list since then. So I can't wait. Uh, if you guys are all ready, then let's get to the list. All right, and starting us off on my top five list of Black Widows here at number five is uh, this one from Captain America Winter Soldier movie set. Um, this, honestly, for a long time was my number one go-to Black Widow. Uh, so it's actually pretty crazy for me to have her so low on the list, but there's just been so many good ones since then. So we'll take a look at her here. Uh, I really love this trait to start out with Double Agent when Black Widow is part of a theme team and she uses probability control. Uh, as a result, you may reduce the number of times your opponent can use probability control from being a theme team instead of you. When she uses probability control as a result of uh, being part of a theme team, she is not given an action token. So uh, the rules have changed a little bit for theme team probs. Uh, you don't, you're not given an action token from it anymore anyway, but that was just like a really, really good effect to have. But one of the upsides to it now is that since uh, the number of theme team probs on your team has been reduced from five to three, and in fact, when she came out, there wasn't a limit that I uh, remember. It was just kind of like, you know, how many characters you had on your team. But uh, now that there's only three theme team probs, <laughs> taking those away from your opponent uh, is just that much better. Uh, you know, she can in three turns, she can just drain your opponent's theme team probs all together, which is pretty crazy. Um, and then she has Outwit, Running Shot, and Stealth, which is just a really cool special power there. Uh, Avengers Initiative helps her see through hindering for the outwit and the running shot, which is really nice. Shield team ability helps the team out. And then she has a special on her attack that she can use incapacitate, and when she does, after actions resolve, uh, hit characters are also dealt one penetrating damage. So in cap that also deals a penetrating damage is really nice. Now she is very uh, high points there. 114 is about the highest pointed Black Widow, I think. Um, but she's well worth it. I think even now for the, you know, the draining your opponent's theme team props is pretty awesome. Her stats, you know, not as amazing, uh, for the points anymore. Nine movement with that running shot, stealth, outwit, special, 10 attack with precision strike, 17 defense with combat reflexes, and three damage with shape change. So between the combat reflexes, shape change, and stealth, she is pretty well defended. And I just really love being able to outwit stealthy characters. And, you know, running shot with a three range is not great, but uh, it's better than a charge with a zero range. If you think about it like that, it's almost like a charge with a three square giant reach in a sense. Pretty much exactly the same on click two there. Loses an attack on click three. Then goes into some sidestep toughness and combat reflexes. And that's where she picks up that incapacitate special for the penetrating damage. Um, yeah, so oof. Yeah, her stats... Don't really hold up as well anymore, but she's still a really fun figure for all the cool things that she can do. And for all those reasons, she's coming in at number five. And coming in at number four on our list here is the Black Widow from the uh, Age of Ultron movie set, uh, starter set actually. This is the one from the starter set, not the main set. Uh, and we'll take a look at her card here. So she has improved movement for characters, which is really nice. And then she has a traded charge. And when Black Widow is adjacent to a friendly character named Hawkeye, they both modify their defense values by plus one, if not already modified by this effect. So really cool. Uh, you know, I always play her with a Hawkeye, obviously. Usually the Hawkeye from this starter set, because uh, he does the same thing, traded running shot. And then he also has, if he's adjacent to Black Widow, they both get plus one attack. So they make a nice little duo. Um, but yeah, improved movement characters and traded charge is really cool and just a bonus if you play her with a Hawkeye. Uh, Avengers Initiative also to move and see through hindering. Again, moving through hindering not really a thing anymore, but seeing through hindering still useful. And she can use incapacitate and quake here on her special attack power. And then she has really cool damage power. Uh, can use close combat expert when she has no action tokens. She may either activate it as a close combat action or she may modify her attack value by an additional plus one when using it. So, you know, with the changes to close combat expert, um, using it as a close action isn't really something you want or need to do anymore. 
Um, so, but just a plus one attack when using it, you know, still helpful. Plus two attack, plus one damage uh, with the close combat expert essentially is really good. And we'll just click through her dial really fast. So yeah, she's got a five range, which is helpful for, you know, seeing through hindering there. Sidestep, uh, precision strike, willpower to remove her tokens and some shape change for some defense there. And don't forget traded charge with that sidestep as well. Um, and then she gets into her special attack and damage powers. Uh, and then she gets some stealth and combat reflexes. Back to precision strike, back to the special attack power, and then chaos there, yeah. So, pretty cool. I really love the traded charge and everything else. Uh, 75 points is a pretty decent point value, so she's been a lot of fun every time I've used her, and for all those reasons, she's coming in at number four. And coming in at number three on our list of Black Widows is Widow on the Motorcycle. Love this sculpt. This was like a kind of special LE figure for the new movie set. It was like, what, 20 bucks or something? You just buy it in a box by itself. Still have the box somewhere, I think. Uh, really, really cool figure, though. Uh, does a lot of really amazing things. So she starts out with a trait here that says, Hypersonic Speed, when Black Widow uses it and hits uh, with a close attack, if she's on a theme team or your starting force has two other characters from the Black Widow movie set, after resolutions, you may place the hit character in any square she moved through after the attack. If you do, deal them one penetrating damage. So that's just so good for so many reasons. I mean, traded hypersonic is good enough as it is. And then, you know, if she's on a theme team and she hits with a close attack, then uh, you can place them in any square she moved through and deal them a free penetrating damage. You can basically just drag them back to your, you know, the rest of your team and just get them into a kill box situation. I mean, you're already hitting them. You're hitting them for a free penetrating after that. Pretty, pretty easy to finish off if you drag them next to your rest of your team there. Improved movement for characters is really, really nice with that hypersonic as well. It means you don't have to break away. You can get in and out. And, you know, it doesn't matter if they put some characters in the way. It won't stop you. Uh, just really, really good effect there. Another trait gives her free, once per game, half speed, then move. And when Black Widow leaves the map, generate a heavy object in one of her squares, protected pulse wave. So obviously a free half speed move is insane when you already have traded hypersonic speed. That gives her, you know, just so much extra reach with that hypersonic, it's crazy. And uh, you get a free heavy object when she leaves the map. Because it's really cool because they kind of incorporated that part of like the vehicle rules. Uh, because she's, you know, on a motorcycle. I just thought that was really fun. But then she has another trait. During force construction, you may include a character named Black Widow of 75 points or less on your sideline. The first time Black Widow would be KO'd, instead replace her with that Black Widow on uh, its last non-KO click. Then roll 86 and heal that Black Widow half the result. This game, that Black Widow can't be healed any other way. Protected Pulse Wave. So good. So uh, she's only 75 points. And when she would be KO'd, you get a whole other uh, Black Widow jumping off the motorcycle. You get that heavy object in the square. Um, it's kind of just like if she was just a regular Black Widow driving a motorcycle vehicle in the game. Uh, I just think they did that really well. Uh, so yeah, you get a whole extra Black Widow potentially on the side there. Uh, and that also stops your opponents, you know, from scoring these points until they kill that Black Widow, which is really neat. Sidestep, which also helps with the hypersonic and the free move. 11 attack precision strike, 18 with super senses, and 3 damage with range combat expert, which can actually now combo with the hypersonic. You could hypersonic up and shoot with a 12 attack, 4 damage, precision strike. Pretty insane there. Uh, or you could hit with a close attack and drag them away. 5 range double targets, pretty nice. Uh, and then she gets some charge, in cap, energy shield, and shape change. Uh, and let's not forget, of course, Avengers Initiative to see through hindering. I mean, just all around, such an amazing figure. Uh, there's so many fun, cool things you can do with it. I've already built a few teams with her. Uh, that really just gets her all the way across the map, like turn one and, and almost all the way back and then just running shot up and finish off whatever figure she dragged over. Uh, so yeah, she's a great figure and she's coming in at number three. And coming in at number two on my list is all of the Shifting Focus Black Widows. Now, 
Uh, I don't want to be here all day and talking about all of them, so I'll just kind of give you the cliff notes here. Basically, of course, they're all shifting focus, so they have the same trait free. If they began your turn on the map, you can replace them with any other character with this trait. Improved targeting characters is really nice on this one. This one's probably my favorite overall, the number one, uh, and that's because of her trait. That If she's on a theme team or you have two or more characters from the Black Widow set, opposing characters can't use improved targeting abilities to target her or a friendly adjacent characters, um, which is just super good, you know, with stealth. And if you have any other friendly characters with stealth, they can't see through the stealth, they can't see through characters, they can't see through elevated or blocking or anything cool like that. Um, she's just a good attacker too. Perplex helps, precision strike, really good. And then the next one over here has leadership, and you know, if she's on a theme team and stuff, opposing characters on the map six or more squares away uh, can't be placed within six squares of her, um, which is really good for basically colossal retaliation prevention. Um, and some other things. Telekinesis, and then you can also basically choose to give them enhancement or empower after she places them, which can be really good, especially now. Uh, she also has prob and traded leadership. This is a really good, basically, um, support version uh, for the team if you need some leadership, prob, enhancement, etc., TK, all that good stuff. This one is also probably my second favorite, the rare one here. First of all, because she has this trait where, you know, if she's on a theme team, uh, an opposing character is generated or placed on the map from a sideline within six squares of her after resolutions. You and your opponent basically roll off if your result is higher. Uh, you give that character two action tokens so they can't actually do anything that turn. Uh, helps out a lot for like those trouble alerts and you know ID cards and that kind of stuff. Smoke Cloud as free and opposing characters occupying her Smoke Cloud markers can't use improved abilities or team abilities. I absolutely love this for just shutting off power cosmic or cosmic energy or whatever. Uh, she can see through stealth with her own team ability. You know, she has stealth, which the free smoke cloud helps with. And then just outwit, just turn off free smoke to turn off their team abilities and outwit them. I don't even care if you have power cosmic. It's so good. It's literally one of my favorite figures. This next one is cool. Uh, she has the same if you're part of a theme team, blah, blah, blah. If she hits an opposing character that's equipped, both you and your opponent roll a d6. If your result's higher, you can uh, take that opposing equipment and put it on any of your friendly characters, even if it can only equip friendly, you know, for their stuff. So stealing your opponent's equipment is great. And then Quake, and when she uses it, uh, give each character an action token. Potentially hand out a lot of action tokens. Charge, exploit, really good close combat fighter there. Uh, and then last but not least, the free comic book day version that came out a little bit after the set release. Uh, just basic, has incapacitate as free, is really nice. Running shot, penetrating blast, perplex, pretty good ranged attacker there. Uh, so yeah, basically just with all the different options that these five figures can give you for only 75 points. Um, you know, one's kind of like anti-retaliation, one's kind of anti-call-in. Um, you know, one's a support figure, one's a range attacker, one's a close, fi uh, close fighter. Um, they, they just do so much, and you can swap between them at will. You know, you, you can protect yourself from any type of improved targeting. You can shut off power cosmic. It's insane how much these five figures can accomplish on their own. And so for all those reasons, they're coming in at number two. And as always, before we get to our number one pick, we have a few honorable mentions. So uh, we'll start with this one. This is from the Civil War movie set. Uh, if you haven't noticed so far, almost every figure on this list, but actually, yeah, every figure so far on this list has been from a movie set. Um, so, oops, there we go. Here's her card from Civil War, like I said, so she's on Iron Man's side. So for plus five points, she can have traded plasticity, which is pretty cool. Um, she also has adjacent opposing characters that modify attack and defense by minus one if they have at least one action token on them, which is great. Um, Avengers Initiative team ability, 95 or 45 points, so it can be 100 or 50 if you play that plasticity trait. I mainly like her for the 50 point line because she starts out with a uh, sidestep, that special attack power that uh, modifies their attack and defense minus one if they have a token, combat reflexes, and shape change. So you pay the five points to make her 50 points. You basically just run her up there, tie them up with plasticity, combat reflexes gives her a 19 defense, uh, shape change, of course, gives her a rollout, and minusing one, their attack and defense, just, you know, to make it that much harder to hit her in the first place, 
and that much easier for her to hit them or your friendlies to hit them. She just makes a really, really great tie-up figure. She's only like three clicks deep, but then uh, she does get some poison and outwit and some leap climb to get away, which is pretty nice. Now, if you were to play her at the 95 point line, she's got charge, um, and super senses, and outwit. And I do like the outwit there with the Avengers initiative, so you can outwit the stealthy figures. And then that's kind of a look there at the rest of her dial right before she gets to that midpoint. And yeah, so that's her. Uh, like I said, really, really good tie-up figure. And um, the next one we'll take a look at here is pretty much also just a really good tie-up figure. This one here from the Avengers vs. Masters of Evil Battlegrounds starter set. Um, I like this figure a lot. Uh, for at either point value. I think it's really cool because it's kind of a two-in-one. You've got the really uh, cheap basic version for 25 points. She's just, you know, got super senses and shape change, four clicks of life, 11 attack and three damage means she can actually hit pretty hard. And I just run her up there and just, you know, drop her in the middle of a group of enemies and uh, just tie them up. And, you know, they got to hit a super sense shape change roll, double rollouts there. And uh, for 25 points, even if they do manage to get through that, I don't even care. <laughs> you know, she's just a good distraction piece. Um, then for the 50-point version, she's got Sidestep and Stealth on her special movement, and uh, Close Combat Expert and Shape Change on her special damage power. So again, uh, then she also picks up some Incapacitate there. So Sidestep and Stealth uh, give her some movement and some more protection. She still has the double rollouts, but she also has close combat expert to really hit hard in close combat. Or she has a four range double target for some incapacitate. Uh, for only 50 points, I just think she's a really solid little secondary attacker figure at that point. And then lastly, we have this one from uh, Avengers Defenders War. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was really cool uh, that they did a Avengers version and a Defenders, or not a Defenders, a Marvel Knights version, sorry. Um, yeah, which, same sculpt, uh, they did basically the same thing. This one is the Running Shot Avengers version. The, uh, Marvel Knights version had Charge, but they were almost identical otherwise. And we'll just take a quick look at her card. Improved movement for elevation and hindering, traded stealth, and basically just Running Shot, double target in cap, and some willpower. Um, nothing too fancy, I just really like the sculpt on this one, swinging on the line there. And uh, running shot double target in cap was kind of cool with this traded stealth and the improved movement was nice. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to our number one pick. All right, and if you haven't already guessed it, super spying her way into our number one spot is, of course, Chase Black Widow from the Black Widow movie set. Um, now, obviously, I've done a team build or two on this figure. I've done um, a lot of videos about this. A lot of old Meta Monday discussions were specifically talking about how ridiculous she was. And uh, a lot of my gameplay videos, you guys might have seen my, uh, I got placed second in Arkansas State's playing her. Uh, so obviously she's got to be my number one. Improved movement for elevation is really nice there. Uh, her trait here is if Black Widow is on a theme team or your starting force has two other characters from the Black Widow movie set. Uh, standard friendly characters can't have their attack rolls of 10 or more re-rolled, and opposing characters targeting those characters can't have their attack rolls of 4 or less re-rolled. Now, while we're talking about this, I should mention this trait did receive an errata. It was literally just too good, just map-wide um, ability to shut down re-rolls for your attack rolls of 10 or more, or their attack rolls of 4 or less. Just really too good. Uh, so she starts the game with five Tradecraft tokens, and now you have to remove two Tradecraft tokens to have this effect. Now, I'm pretty sure the effect still lasts the whole game, but you just have to remove two Tradecraft tokens to access it. Um, so you don't have to, like, remove two every turn or anything. It's just you remove two, and then you get to use this, uh, which is fair. Um, so she starts the game with five Tradecraft tokens, and then free, remove a Tradecraft token to choose an opposing character within six squares and line of fire until your next turn. That character can't use a standard power unless it's displayed on their dial as a colored square and can't have their combat values positively modified. Honestly, I forget about the uh, positively modifying combat values half the time. That's just such a good effect to just 
get rid of anything that's not actually a colored square on their dial. And also any standard powers they get from traits, they can't use those either because again, not colored uh, squares on the dial. So it really shuts down a lot of figures really hard. Anything they get, any standard powers they get from equipment as well, can't use that. Yeah, it's honestly just really way too good. Uh, but then she also has a stop click that when this power is first revealed, remove all of Black Widow's Tradecraft tokens and heal her that many clicks. So she does have a stop click and depending on how many Tradecraft tokens you have left, she can heal up quite a bit or maybe just like one or two clicks or maybe not at all if you've used up all your Tradecraft tokens. But still the ability to hit a stop, heal up a few clicks and have to hit that stop again does give her a lot of survivability. Then she also has a special damage power that gives her leadership and outwit and free remove a tradecraft token to generate a widow's initiate or a widow's recruit on click number one. Pro tip, always generate a widow's recruit, the initiate, not quite as good. Uh, the, the recruit gets poisoned and you can just place her on the map and poison people, which is super, super good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she starts with six range double target, 10 movement with running shot, 12 attack with penetrating blast, 18 defense, with combat reflexes, and don't forget she's got traded stealth in there, and a three damage with that leadership outwit special. Uh, and then she also has Avengers Initiative to see through hindering, so she can, you know, running shot somebody in hindering, she can outwit somebody in hindering, uh, if in, in stealth rather. Uh, really good. And then she gets some charge, precision strike, exploit weakness, and then goes to some sidestep, uh, super senses, and close combat expert. Then she hits that stop that she heals off of. Um, just so good. I mean, just so powerful. The fact that you can outwit and use that other thing where it shuts off all uh, standard powers that aren't printed on their dial means that she can shut off a ton of powers in a turn on one character or on even a couple separate characters. The ability to call in reinforcements for free with the recruits and the initiates is also very, very useful. You can carry her up super far. She can take a free action to just pop one out. They can poison, they can attack. It's crazy. She's just such a good attacker, such a good support piece, and such a good uh, just board control piece. It's honestly insane. Probably too good for Black Widow, I, I could argue. Um, but this is definitely peak Black Widow. And not only that, but this is definitely the best all-time Black Widow sculpt. Mine is broken off a couple times. I've had to re-glue it right there, unfortunately. Uh, but this is still the best Black Widow sculpt of all time. That epic jumping, punching pose is super cool. Hair flowing in the wind and everything. Um, so not only is this actually the best dial you could ever see on a Black Widow, this is also one of the best sculpts of all time, uh, for Black Widow at least. Uh, so yeah, for all those reasons, of course, she's coming in at number one. All right, so that's going to do it for this top five list. As always, make sure you let me know in the comments, you know, what you think about all of these Black Widow figures, what some of your favorites are, if there's any other characters you'd like to see me do in a future top five list. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. It helps out a lot. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. If you guys are watching this, I've probably already seen the Black Widow movie by the time this video comes out. Uh, so make sure if you guys want to talk about the movie in the comments, uh, feel free to do that too. Just be careful for spoilers. Oh, and we're also now on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all that cool stuff. Facebook, make sure if you guys want to uh, follow everything we do, get some behind the scenes stuff then check us out there as well. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more, there's of course links in the description for our Patreon. You can check that out there. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, this has been Heroclix Headquarters, signing off.